Hello, today I would like us to look at factor analysis and the two major types of factor analysis that are commonly used in academic research, which include the principal component analysis and the principal as this factoring. So I encourage you to watch the tutorial to the end so you'll be able to understand the differences between the principal component analysis and principal as is factoring and be able to know when to apply them in your research. In between the tutorial, I will be demonstrating the analysis using SPSS. So I will demonstrate the analysis from uh, factor analysis to, to confirmatory factor analysis. So let's consider a scenario where you have collected data from customers about an exercise kit product that you sell and you've gathered response on various aspects like product quality, customer service and pricing. You want to understand if there are underlying factors that explain why customers are satisfied or dissatisfied. So there are key factors, there are key issues, key points that I would like to first of all explain to you before we talk about uh, factor analysis. So the number one is the observed variables. So what are the observed variables? If we are looking at feedback, you want to get feedback from customers on a particular product that you're selling. So in this case, I'm talking about exercise kits that you sell. So the feedback metrics here could be product quality, customer service, and pricing. So this could be the observed variables. So another point that we want to look at include the latent factors, or in this case, the feedback orientations. So these are hidden influences that may be affecting the feedback. And let's say there are latent factors like product experience, customer support satisfaction, and value for money. These are not directly measured, but could be influencing the overall. Another key factor here includes the factor loadings. So this represents the strength of the relationship between each feedback matrix and the latent factor. For example, the high factor loadings might indicate that customer service satisfaction strongly contribute to the overall satisfaction with the exercise kit product. So just like I tried to explain here, so you will find out that the product quality, customer service and pricing helps us to understand the concept of product experience, customer support satisfaction and the, the value for money that they have for the product. Okay. So another key issue that I want us to talk about is a key point in factor analysis, which is the eigenvalue. So if you find that there are a few latent factors with eigenvalue greater than one, it suggests that these factors are important in explaining overall satisfaction and can serve as key factor affecting customer feedback. Okay. The next point is commonality. The commonality it's like understanding how much each factor metric shares with the common factors. It helps you to see how much of the individual feedback score are explained by the underlying factors. So in essence, the factor analysis in the context of feedback orientation helps you uncover the hidden reasons or orientations that drive customer satisfaction. So before I go further in demonstrating this in SPSS, I would like us to look at the trench hood for factor loading cutoff. All items in a factor model should have commonalities of over 0.6 or an average commonality of 0.7 to justify performing a factor analysis with smaller sample. That's if you have small sample uh, size. So you can actually pause the video to copy out uh, these references, okay? So in order to demonstrate this in SPSS, I have these multi-dimensional scales that I have developed. So I've developed this by looking at previous studies, okay? So I will, in future, I will make a video on how you can develop, you can self-develop your own measurement scale. 
but for the purpose of this video i have developed these measurement scales from existing literature i didn't adapt from existing scale and i also did not uh, uh, adopt in other words i didn't use a previously developed measurement scale or made modifications on an existing measurement scale so in this case i personally developed this so i came up with six item statements for the product experience so you can see that they are all personalized so i named them the pe pe and then you can see that uh the customer support satisfaction kit i also named them uh css and then i also have uh, value for money as multi-dimensional scale measuring feedback so and I have six item statements that are well developed and highly personalized so let me take you to the SPSS once more so you can see uh, this is the CSS PE let me see once more product experience one to six and that PE product experience one to six okay and then the next one I have, for example, a sample said, I appreciate the robustness of the exercise kit. The equipment can withstand regular use. That is product experience. For example, this one said, I easily set up the exercise kit due to the clear instructions in the manual. Very free of ambiguity, straightforward, and there are no mix up of issues and then again look at the customer support satisfaction uh it says i appreciate the the helpful guidance provided by the customer support team when seeking information about using or maintaining my exercise kit very very straightforward and not confusing so when you want to develop your own item statement make sure they are not confusing make sure they are straightforward now, and the, another one here, uh, I have value for money. So I have four item statements measuring value for money. Uh, let me take you to SPSS. So that is value for money item statement one, two, four. So, and then you can see that I have various responses and I have uh, one for strongly disagree and six for strongly agree. And I, in most cases, I also have, uh, sorry, I have seven for the highest response care which is um, strongly I agree in this case so this is the dependent variable in my in my own case um, so i have the dependent variable here which is the the customer satisfaction so this is my my worry i, I want to assess the customers i want to know about their satisfaction with the exercise kit so these are the four item statements measuring customer satisfaction in this case um, for example, I am pleased with the positive changes the exercise kit has brought to my health. Straightforward, free of ambiguity, all right? Okay, so but let us look at the differences between uh, the, the principal component analysis and then principal axis factoring. So this will determine uh, whether we are going to use the principal component analysis or whether we are going to use the principal axis factoring when conducting this study. So first of all, let us look at the objective. So what is the objective of the principal component analysis? Because most times we see people use the PCA or PAF in their factor analysis um, in their papers. So the, the earlier we try to understand the both and then know what you have in mind that you want to do, the earlier. So let us look at the both. He said the principal component analysis, the goal is to transform the original variables into a new set of uncorrelated variables, that is, principal components, that captures as much of the variance in the data as possible. It is not explicitly designed for uncovering latent factors. Now, let us also see the, the, the principal axis factoring. It said the principal axis factoring, on the other hand, is specifically designed for identifying the underlying latent factors that explain 
the observed correlations among variables. Okay, let us also look at the assumptions between the both. The principal component analysis assumes that all the variance in the variable is due to common factors with no consideration for unique variance or measurement error. But the principal axis factoring allows the possibility of unique variance, that is, unique to each variable, and assumes that there are both common and unique factors contributing to the variance. Now, let us look at the interpretation. So, this will now help us to decide whether we are going to conduct the principal axis factoring or we are going to conduct the principal component um, analysis in, the, in this particular case. The principal components derived from the PCA may not have clear and meaningful interpretations in terms of the original variables, as their goal is to maximize variance. Okay? But the principal axis factoring is often considered more interpretable because it explicitly seeks to identify underlying factors that are, you know, that can be meaningfully related to the observed variables. And then let us look at the rotations, under rotations. Rotations that allow for correlation are called oblique rotations. That is factors correlated example the pro mass then rotations that assume that factors are not correlated are called orthogonal rotation that is factors not correlated example the very mass so if you want to look at factors that are correlated you want to see whether the the factors are correlated then the oblique rotation should be the ideal rotation that you're going to apply now, in summary, while both PCA and PAF are techniques used in factor analysis, the principal component analysis is more focused on variance maximization and might not be ideal for identifying underlying factors. The principal axis factoring, on the other hand, is explicitly designed for factor analysis and aims to uncover the latent factors that contribute to the observed correlations among variables. So in this particular study, my focus is to identify the correlations among the variables because I want to see the correlations between the feedback orientation. I want to see the product experience, the customer support satisfaction. I want to see how, uh, and then value for money, I want to see how they, uh, they relate to um, customer satisfaction.